logic. We use the word logic and words derived from that same Greek root logos in a variety of ways. You've probably said that someone was being illogical because they were too emotional or didn't agree with you. You might have thought of logic as a way of proving things or reasoning better. I plan to dig a little deeper and talk about logic as one basic way to approach our use of language. For starters, that means I'd like to distinguish between logic as a way of talking about thinking, especially reasoning and truth, and logic as a way of talking about language and what goes into using language. I don't mean to propose this division as a hard and exceptionless rule, but however you plan to use logic, as long as you're communicating with other humans, your basic starting point will be logic as a way to analyze language. But since the systems we use to communicate analysis are themselves languages, that means we'll have to consider logic itself as a language. This short series will introduce logic as a language. More specifically, I'll present logic as a formal language. Uh, formal not because it's more polite, but because it focuses on form instead of meaning. Before getting into the basics, consider what I, I will and will not cover in this series. Um, you will get to consider logic as a language, see how to translate into that language, and look at symbolic logic as a kind of backbone model for the fuller statements made in everyday language. I won't spend time analyzing good or bad arguments, you know, syllogisms and formal and formal fallacies and the like. Um, I won't discuss inductive versus deductive reasoning. Uh, I won't consider admittedly important questions like does logic underlie both language and reality? What are the various types of logics? And how do they relate to or differ from each other? Or apply the logic, of the language of logic to any particular field? On with the basics. I threw the terms logic and language out at you. I know those are abstract terms, but think about learning a new language, a language spoken in some foreign country. If you reflect for a moment on the components of that language, you'll have to take on new sounds, new parts of words, the specific words used in that language, the meaning of those new words, and the rules for constructing well-formed phrases and sentences. One way to simplify all of this is by trying to find some core concept. We might imagine that speakers use language to convey things to listeners. For example, when I tell you about a house, you might think of something very much like this. So the word house acts as a symbol for this. Here we took words as our core concept and said that words are symbols. But it looks like words aren't just symbols, they're fixed symbols with specific definitions. When you parse the word house, you related the word to a single concept. The word house and other words act like constant symbols, or constants. One key feature of these constants, like house, dog, and blue, is that they have semantic value. They're, they're meaningful. These meaningful constants, constants can relate to one another in a variety of ways. Two broad and basic relationships are intention and extension. Intention refers to what a word connotes. Other words commonly associated with that word, or other words that are properties of that word, this connotes house, red, and so on. Extension is what a word denotes, its definition or its examples. For example, house extends to this. Of course, we don't just speak in single words. We also make statements like the house is red or fish can swim, and those statements are meaningful so we would consider those symbols too. So far it follows that those statements would also work like constants. But now we're taking on so many symbols, all kinds of things, all kinds of sentences we can say about things. All of these are symbols. It would be hard to count all of them, let alone, let alone analyze all of them. What if we could strip language down to just the symbols? That's the aim of symbolic logic. We want a set of symbols that helps us evaluate structure without getting tethered in the meaning and the use. We may still want constants, but we'll definitely need symbols that aren't so fixed. Since their meanings wouldn't be fixed, these symbols would vary, so they're called variables. To make it easy on ourselves, we'll use very simple symbols for variables like x. We can use these variables for words. This x can mean a house, but it's not limited to that value. It might mean a dog. It might also represent an entire statement. This house is red, or I'm speaking English. These symbols will help us strip our, our language down and take a good look at the structure. 
For variables, I can use symbols like x, y, and z. For statements with some truth value, it's common to use p and q. These are all conventions, of course. In concrete cases, you will want to use a symbol that helps you make sense of the logical form, say, e, when you're exclusively reading e as the English language, or English. In this case, you're using that symbol as an individual constant, a name with a specific interpretation. Well, that's background for the upcoming videos. In the next lesson, I'll talk about subjects and predicates. I'll also use variables and constants to take a look at the logic behind some normal language sentences using formal logic.